I love clothes, especially colourful clothes, and as a plus size person it can be a little bit tricky, but I do try to get most of my clothes from local sustainable brands or secondhand. And recently my partner and I went on a little road trip to Dalesford. And if you know anything about thrifting, there is something extra special about shopping secondhand in places that aren't where you live. I have also recently, I know it's taken me a while, but I've recently dived into the world of Depop. And so basically I just have heaps of really cool secondhand things to show you. I've got clothes, I've got jackets, I've got bags, I've got books. So first, let me take you to Dalesford. Let me show you around at some of the spots that we checked out. And then we'll come back and we'll do a good old fashioned haul. <laughs> pieces of our trip but I we just had such a good time in Dalesford. I think a few days away just the two of us was exactly what we needed and all of that secondhand shopping that was just a bonus and it certainly didn't hurt me or my closet. So even though we went to a lot of places in Dalesford I didn't find as much as I thought I might. Having said that everything that I found I feel like is kind of a gem. I'm thrilled about everything that I found. I found quite a few books and we'll talk about those in a minute. I found two jackets and like I don't like to measure my thrifting success in quantity right. I feel like quality wise I nailed it. But if you've been around these parts for a little while you'll know that I've had a couple of successful savers runs recently and I haven't had a chance to show you those and like I said I've dived into the world of Depop recently. I've been trying not to get too overwhelmed and too excited on Depop because like I feel like a whole new world has opened up to me. So as far as Depop's concerned I'm really like I'm not trying to focus on bargains instead I'm trying to focus on finding like really special items from brands that I love. So I thought while we were here doing a bit of a show and tell of my Dalesford scores I could show you all of those as well. And to be honest with you we've got a lot to go through so let's get started. And actually the very first thing I found at the very first op shop we stopped at in Melton on the way to Dalesford was a little bag. It's this little crossbody bag, it's from Preen which is a brand I have another secondhand bag from. It's this really cute kind of pastel green and it does have ears. I'm not sure how I feel about a bag having ears. I think I could remove them but I haven't decided yet if I really want to. My plan is just to wear this bag for a while and see. See how I feel about the ears. So I was very excited to find this little one in a colour that I love that I think will go with lots of my wardrobe. I feel like I should probably save these to the end because I think especially one of them is an absolute find. But I want to show you, I want to talk about the jackets. I found two jackets while we were away. The first one I found at another op shop on the way to Dalesford. I think it was just a Vinnie's or something. It's this green kind of, it feels like suede but I don't think it is. Yeah no it's just polyester but I 
I just really like the color and I really like the fit on me. I also just really liked this neckline and whoever owned it before me kind of stitched in this little patch. I think it's an anchor, but it also sort of looks like an eye, but like, I'm not mad about it. I think it's kind of funky. I think I got this jacket for $8. $8. It looks brand new. And when I got home, I realized I actually had this same exact jacket tagged on Depop or saved on Depop. So like I'd come across it in an entirely different context and saved it. And somebody was selling this jacket for $75. I wasn't willing to spend that much, but eight? $8 I absolutely was willing to spend. Next up is the most expensive item I bought while away at Dalesford. It is secondhand. We ended up traveling up to Castlemaine to go to Mutual Muse. Mutual Muse is like a secondhand reselling shop. Uh, they've got a couple of shops here in Melbourne and I've been to their Brunswick store before. I've actually sold clothes to them. So obviously the nature of the business is they're gonna be more expensive because it's more curated. But anyway, Castlemaine was like a half hour drive. So we kind of went up that way, the long way home, pretty much just so I could stop into Mutual Muse. And I'm so happy we did because hanging in the window was this absolute beauty of a bomber jacket. And I recognized this jacket immediately because it's by a Melbourne based brand called Collective Closets. From memory, Collective Closets is founded by two sisters. I think they're African Australian. And like I said, it's a Melbourne brand and I just always like drool over their stuff when I see it online. But one, it's relatively pricey and like I understand they're sustainable, they're local. It, I'm sure it's more than worth it, but they tend to just be, you know, outside of my own price bracket, which is fine. So when I saw this, like I recognized this from their website a year or two ago. And it is this incredible bomber jacket. I love the blue, I love the yellow. These aren't colors that I have a lot of in my wardrobe, but I do want to kind of branch outside of my purple, pink, and green, add a little bit more variety in. And the cool thing about this is it's also reversible. So you've got the option of the very fun blue and yellow, or you can reverse it for a nice understated black. It does have some very slight pilling. So like it's clearly secondhand, but nothing, there's no damage to it or anything like that. It's still in very good condition. I tend to gravitate towards like bigger oversized kind of shacket jackets, but I do really like this style of bomber. So it's nice to incorporate something just a little bit different into my wardrobe. I actually got something else while we're at Mutual Muse, but I'm wearing them. So I can't hold them up to show you, but they're these, I, I suppose like, I don't even know what color these are. Ecru, beige, cream, but they're these trousers. And so these were at Mutual Muse, which obviously means they're a little bit pricier, but they were in the sale section. So I got these half price. I think I ended up paying $30 for these and I think they fit me perfectly. Again, this is an item that feels a little bit different from me. I don't have anything in this color in my wardrobe, certainly any pants. I tend to gravitate towards darker pants, but one thing about me, I like a lot of contrast in the colors in my outfits. And I, like I said, I really gravitate towards dark green and dark purples and reds and stuff. So when I put these on and I realized how good they fit me, at first I wasn't sure if I was drawn to this color, but then the idea of pairing them with a lot of my darker tops, a lot of my darker jumpers, I was so excited. It just felt like the kind of pant that I wouldn't have thought to pick up for myself. I wouldn't have thought to go out of the way to look for. But once I had them on, I didn't want to take them off. And I just love how they fit me. They're not too tight anywhere. They're really comfortable. I definitely have like a larger hip kind of area compared to my waist. And these are a little bit big around my waist, but I love how they fit me everywhere else. And they actually have these kind of like pull tabs that you can adjust very slightly and pull in the waist just that little bit. Now, one thing I did want to say is that this brand, Sook Workwear, they're local and they claim to be ethical and sustainable. While I love these pants and I am more than happy to purchase them secondhand, this is a brand that I've gone out of my way not to purchase from and not to support. I'm not somebody who knows everything about every brand that I shop at. I could definitely be more informed. But Sook Workwear in particular, a few years ago, it came out that they had investments and involvement with the live export trade. So it was already something I wasn't interested in. But recently with the escalation of the genocide in Gaza, it's also come out that the owners have involvements with the IDF and Israel. So anyway, I just wanted to make that clear. I really love these pants, but I would not have purchased them from the company. And even though I love them and part of me wants more of these pants in different colors, only secondhand. I will only be purchasing anything by this brand secondhand. I don't want my money going to them. But anyway, rant over, let's circle back to the haul. The final two pieces that I picked up during our Dalesford trip were actually two scarves. I've been looking for some scarves to kind of, you know, tie in my hair, tie around my neck, just kind of add 
a little bit more pattern, a little bit more color. And so when I stumbled across both of these, I was just thrilled. The first one I found, again, was on the way to Dalesford, is this one. Isn't it so pretty? I just love it. I love these colors and I've already worn this a couple of times. I mean, we've got the pinks, we've got the purples, we've got the greens, and we've got a whole host of other colors. Like this is just very much a color palette I love. And then the second one was the very last thing I purchased at a bazaar in Castlemaine. And it's this one. Again, just absolutely my color palette. Greens and purples, this time on a base of black just to kind of make it, I don't know, a, a little bit less loud than the first one. But I was so happy to find both. They're just perfect. Okay, so those are all the clothes I found at Dalesford. Now let's have a chat about some of the clothes that I've been finding on Depop and at my local savers recently. Let's start with the jumpers because there's a few of them. Yep, I basically have a new winter wardrobe and I couldn't be more happy about it. At the beginning of winter, I went through my wardrobe and basically just got rid of a whole bunch of stuff that was really not serving me. There wasn't a lot of stuff in most of my closet, but in the knits, I really had to do a purge. I think honestly, it has taken me this long to really figure out how I like to dress for winter and how I feel comfortable in Melbourne. But secondly, and importantly, in the time since last winter to you know the beginning of this winter, I have realized that I'm autistic. And so all those little things about so many of my jumpers, whether they were the wrong texture or they fit me too tight around the arms or if they pulled in the wrong way or they were a bit too scratchy, whatever. All those little things that used to bother me that I used to like try and talk myself out of because it wasn't that big a deal. And so I would wear them, but I would always end up having a bad day and I wouldn't be able to tell you why. Now I know why. Now I know why. So I know I've been talking about it a lot. Me finding out that I'm autistic has been changing my life in so many ways. And my wardrobe is actually a big one. So I got rid of a decent portion of my wardrobe and most of that came from my knits and jumpers. And I knew in my mind replacing those things, I needed to be much more careful about the fit and like how comfortable I felt in those jumpers, but also that I really needed to prioritize getting fabrics that I know I enjoy wearing. And primarily for me, that is cotton. Now I did buy myself a couple of nice new jumpers from like brands that I know and love. And I figured the rest would just kind of come over time secondhand, I would discover things slowly. But as you can see, <laughs> I found a whole bunch of incredible stuff and I couldn't be happier about it. So for time's sake, we will go through these ones pretty quickly. We got this pink one, which is actually from a brand that I saw while we were in Dalesford. I didn't go into their shop because I didn't need any more knits at this point, but I just love this color. I feel very comfortable in this one. This next one is actually just from Jackie E, which is kind of like a fast fashion brand here in Australia, but it's cotton and I loved the fit. I love the scalloping neckline and I love, love the color. Can you tell? I definitely have a color palette that I'm drawn to again and again. And then I've shown you this one in my previous video. This one's actually a merino wool, but it's so soft. It's by a brand I've never heard of before. It's called Milana. But again, I just, I love this color. I love the fit. This was in the men's section. Okay. Now our next three jumpers are all much heavier, as you can see, much chunkier. And these I all found on Depop. So they did cost me a little bit more, but they're all from brands that I love and that I trust. The first is another jumper that I took with me on our trip. So you have seen this before. This one is a beautiful red cable knit jumper from Obis. I would say this is just a relaxed fit on me. It's not oversized. So I just really, really love the fit on me. It's enough if I want to pop it over a dress, which I have done before, but it's also not so big that I can't just wear it on its own. And to top it off, I think this might be my favorite kind of red to wear. So this was the most expensive of the jumpers that I purchased, but I was so, so thrilled to find it secondhand and I couldn't be happier. And then these next two are actually the same jumper, just in different colors and actually slightly different sizes. This one's in a size 22. This one's in a size 20. They're both from Jericho Road. And for these jumpers, they're like a looser knit. They're still heavier, but they're the kind of knit if you were wearing like a bright contrasting shirt underneath, you'd be able to see it a little bit through, if you know what I mean. They're both made out of cotton. They've both got these beautiful big balloon sleeves. They're both like a good kind of oversized on me. And they're both just beautiful in color. I just love them. I found this red one first and I was so excited. I got it for a really good deal. Actually, I was thrilled. And so when the blue one came up, I was almost was like, am I really going to get the same jumper in another color? And then I was like, you know what? Yes, yes I am. I fucking love this jumper. And blue is a color I really like to wear, but I just don't have a huge amount of it in my wardrobe. I've got the reds and the greens and the pinks and the purples covered, so it was nice to add a little bit of blue into. I've already been wearing all three of them heaps, but I know especially as we get into the depths of winter as it gets even colder, 
I'm gonna rely on these so much. Okay, we are nearing the end, I promise. I think we've got four items left. And just quickly, I wanted to show you this bag, this bag that I found on Depop. If you've watched any of my vlogs or if you watched my last video, you will know that my most worn, my most beloved bag is my green Nomo backpack. I got it years ago, years ago. I don't even remember from where from. I did originally buy it new and it's just my favorite backpack. I have been wearing it constantly for years. I just love everything about it. It's the perfect bag. So this bag isn't going to like immediately replace my green bag. That bag still has many more years left in it. I was though really excited to add in like a slightly dressier version, you know? And of course, as we've established, I love a good red. I love a good red accessory. So I was thrilled. I was so excited about this one. Our next item is actually another one that I found at Savers a few weeks ago and I was chuffed. Because again, these are a pant that I saw online when they were being sold from the shop that they were originally from for $200. And I liked them, but I knew I didn't want to buy them new and I certainly didn't want to buy them for $200. But I found them at Savers for $9. And now pants, I do find pants a bit trickier to buy secondhand. I think just because of my size and my shape and the sorts of things that I like on myself. It's just, it's just a lot harder to find than like knit tops, for example. Clearly I have a much better time finding those. But when I saw these and I tried them on, I just loved how they fit me. And that is these green striped trousers. For the waistband, they're fixed at the front, but they've got that little bit of stretch and elastic at the back, which is always nice. It's just that extra bit comfy. And then they're just a really nice wide leg on me. They're a poplin cotton, so I'm not sure how much wear I'm gonna get out of them in the especially very cold parts of winter here in Melbourne. But I did get them a few weeks ago and I have already worn them a couple of times. I feel like even in the kind of early parts of winter, certainly in spring and autumn, and even in the more mild parts of summer, I'm gonna wear these heaps. I just love them. The vertical stripe just gives them that kind of almost clown aesthetic. I just think they're really fun. But because they're a really nice, neat kind of silhouette, I actually think they're the kind of thing that you could dress up if you wanted to as well. And obviously green, green is the basis of my color palette. So they're just, they're just about perfect in my mind. I honestly think this is up there in my top three or so favorites of all of these things that I'm showing you. They're just the kind of thing that is fun enough, funky enough, but also so wearable. Okay, now these next two are definitely like the splurge of the video from one of my favorite Australian Melbourne based brands, which is Variety Hour. I do already have two of their dresses, which I have bought new. Well, in fact, I should correct this one. My mum bought me for my birthday last year. I'm obsessed with this dress. I wear it casually. I wear it to work, I wear it to weddings. I just think it's close enough to the perfect dress. And then I also got this one secondhand, which is definitely a bit more summery. I wear it a lot in the summer and I just adore it. So while I absolutely adore Variety Hour, they definitely are on the more expensive end. They're definitely like at the top end outside of my budget, if I'm being perfectly honest. So now that I'm on Depop, this is a brand that I'm going to search for regularly because I love their clothes. I love how they fit me. I love their colors and they always wear and wash so well. And what do you know, in the six weeks or so that I've been on Depop, I have found this yellow skirt. Yellow is my favorite color, but I don't really feel like it suits me very much. So the idea of having a beautiful bright yellow skirt on like my bottom half that I can wear, you know, the pinks and the greens and the purples that I feel like do suit me, like on my top half, Oh, I couldn't be happier. Even like a bright blue, I think is gonna go incredible with this. I haven't worn this one yet cause like it is getting a bit too cold. I think this is something I'm gonna wear so much in summer. And it looks like it's been worn and washed maybe like two or three times. It's essentially functionally brand new. It's got this like very comfy stretchy waist. I love the length. I love the color. I love basically everything about it. Oh my God, I just love secondhand shopping. You can't beat it. I was about to say, so that's it. But I just remembered we have the books. We still have the books to talk about. Obviously during my shopping escapades. I look at the clothes, but I also always check out the books. I did feel more selective with my book buying. Like we saw so many books and there were plenty of books that I was like, kind of interested in, but I think because I'm in a reading slump and I've read like two books in two months, I still can't get over that. I read like 30 books or 28 books or something in January and now I've read two books in two months. Anyway, it's the natural flow of things. It's okay, I'm fine. For that reason, I definitely was a bit more picky and a bit more selective and a bit less likely to pick up a bunch of books. I still got five though, which is plenty. And all of them were books that I was already interested in. The first one I picked up for $2 is Taboo by Kim Scott. Now, if you've been around here for a little while, you 
might remember that quite a while ago actually I read Kim Scott's Dead Man Dance which was like a Miles Franklin winner I think he's been a Miles Franklin winner twice he's an indigenous author and that Dead Man Dance I found very difficult to get through but by the end I really did appreciate it and come to love it in like a, a kind of interesting way it wasn't my favorite book but I thought what it did was really quite powerful and I thought it was very successful in what it did and the writing was beautiful so after that Dead Man Dance I knew I did want to try Kim Scott again I felt like I could kind of go either way with him either I would end up loving him or this will be my last book and that's okay but I've been keeping my eye out for taboo and actually I found it a few months ago at a secondhand bookshop with a friend when I was out with him my friend Nick but it was up on like the very very high high shelf you know those secondhand bookshops where like everything is just kind of like books are like forced into every nook and cranny I saw the spine of taboo right right up the top and I did ask if they could help me get it down but like they were closing and it was gonna be a whole thing so I just ended up leaving it. I knew eventually I would come across it and and I did. One may as well begin once upon a time. We thought to tell a story with such momentum, a truck careening down a hillside, thunder in a rocky riverbed, a skeleton tumbling to the ground. And the story will speak of magic in an imperial age, of how our dead will return, transform to support us again from within except this is no fairy tale. From Kim Scott, two times winner of the Miles Franklin Literary Award, comes a work charged with ambition and poetry in equal parts brutal, mysterious, and idealistic about a young woman cast into a drama that has been playing out for over 200 years. Next we've got Exploded View by Carrie Tiffany. This is a lovely little hardback book that I remember it came out in like 2019, yeah, and it was one of those books that I almost bought so so many times. It's a short novel, novella, I'm not sure, it's almost 200 pages and it's described as an adolescent girl's terrifying tale of family life. Must a girl always be a part? How can she become whole? I think it's set in the 1970s in Australia and yeah I just I was thrilled to find this for just two dollars. Next is probably the most risky of the bunch but it's a book that I have heard such good things about and I have been curious about. It's The Collective Regrets of Clover by Mickey Brammer and I, I think this is an Australian book although I keep seeing it on booktubers who are not Australian so I think it's just kind of made its way around the world which is pretty cool and I honestly don't know a lot about this book but I have heard people talk about the way that it explores mortality and grief as being hugely moving and those are themes that I tend to really appreciate in my fiction so I've been drawn to this one even if I don't know a lot about it and for three dollars for three dollars who can say no to that next we have a young adult book that I almost buy all the time when we have it in stock at work but we usually only ever have one copy and I feel bad being the one to take it away and that is Please Don't Hug Me by Kay Kerr. Now you might remember that one of my favorite contemporary young adult books ever is called Social Cue by Kay Kerr. Kay Kerr is an autistic author who lives in Brisbane and Social Cue is just one of my favorite romance books that I've ever read. It's a young adult featuring an autistic main character and it's just beautiful. It's funny, it's fun, but it's also so heartfelt and intentional. It's just wonderful. So this was her earlier book and I've been meaning to get around to it and again to find it for two bucks I can't wait to read it finally. And then finally a book that I feel like has gone kind of like semi-viral recently on booktube is 84 Charing Cross Road. I think this is an epistolary novel, yeah it's all written with letters and it's just one of those books that the more I hear people talk about it the more curious I have become so to find it for a few dollars my curiosity got the better of me and I'm looking forward to reading it. I haven't read a lot of epistolary novels. Why can't I say that? Epistol- like I know the word. Epistolary. Epist- mm. <laughs> I swear my tongue just like does not work around certain words sometimes but anyway you know what I mean I'm sure you've heard of this book too so yeah those are the five books that I bought over the five days over the many many op shop trips that we made so thanks so much for hanging out with me and chatting about all of my incredible bargains or I mean some of them weren't bargains but they were incredible finds all of which I cannot wait to wear so many of them I'm already enjoying wearing including my pants right now I haven't filmed a video like this before so if you've got any feedback for me feel free to leave that in the comments below a big thank you as always goes to my patrons over on Patreon and especially big thank you to Livia, Lynette Brown, Emery. And I'll talk to you again soon. Until then, so much love. Bye.